What up, big geeks and dudes and dudettes? My name is DV Geek and welcome back to another episode of Let's Watch Ruby. Alright, dude, so like I have said in my previous reaction video that I've done on the Volume 4 intro, I said I was going to be doing a reaction video on the 4, or should I say the Volume 4, World of Remnant series. Now, dudes, like I said, or like they've done several times in previous volumes, there are four World of Remnants. We have the four regions, actually, that they're going to be focusing on in these World of Remnant series, guys, is Vacuo, Mistral, Atlas, and Veil. I'm really excited to watch them, dudes, because you guys have said countless times in the comments that they're awesome, like they're absolutely amazing, and they really didn't um, tell us too much about these certain regions in the initial anime, so I'm excited to see what way they're going to explain them, what they're like and stuff, because it's been a long time coming since we get this kind of information. So dudes, without further ado, let's watch Ruby. Alright, dude... Alright dude, so here is the first World of Remnant for Volume 4. It's the World of Remnant Veil. Vale. I'm really excited about this dude. Let's do it. Here we go. Boom! Here we go. Oh my god, here we go, dude. Veil. Vale. Well, school's definitely out. <gasps> Let's see if we can all learn a little something. It's Crow! Welcome oh my to god! The world of Remnant. Not the best place to live, but depending on where you're staying, it can get a little easier. You've got towns and villages that pop up as fast as they fall. The faunas have menagerie, but the sweet spots are Vale, Mistral, Atlas, and Vacuo. The awesome. Four kingdoms of the modern era. And four each kingdoms. One's special in its own little way. Let's talk about Vale. Awesome. In the grand scheme of things, Vale's pretty well guarded. It rests on the northeastern end of the world's largest continent, Sanus. Like most successful kingdoms, Vale's survival over the years can mostly be attributed to prime real estate. Its front is protected by steep mountains, and its Whoa. back is against waters too shallow for any real threat to pop out of. Not to say I haven't heard some crazy fish stories. Crazy fish stories. Aside from the main city, which the kingdom's named after, the Vale territory also extends to several neighboring cities farther along the northwest coastline. Oh wow! As well as a small island named Patch. There's an nice island as well. Place to raise a family, if you're into that sort of thing. Of course, Crow's definitely all not. attempts to extend the kingdom's reach past the mountains and farther into the mainland have been colossal failures. Oh my God! But. Like I said, in the grand scheme of things, Vale ain't half bad. Regular climate, natural barriers, and some serious border defenses means the citizens of Vale can spend less time worrying about survival and more time just living their lives. Of course, wow. with the fall of Beacon, everyone's a little more worried these days. Yeah, I could imagine. Oh well, my god. Be. That was awesome! Alright dudes, I really enjoyed that, and the fact that Crow is the narrator for these World of Remnant, maybe it was just this one, I don't know, but, damn, I didn't know so much about Vale until now, like, they actually have estates on the coastline, and they have an island as well, like, this is kind of opening up new routes for... Uh, for them to take, we'll say, on their adventures in Ruby. Like, they could be going to these places in the in the actual anime itself. They could be traveling across to these places. So, it got me super excited, dude. So, dudes, let's watch the next one. Here we go. Okay, dude, so here is the second World of Remnant, Mistral. Here we go. I'm excited about this one. Here we go. Boom! Ruby, World of Remnant. Mistral. Right. Hey, it's Where Crow again! We? It's gonna be Crow for the four. Sanus is Remnant's second largest landmass, Anima. That's where you'll find the kingdom of Mistral. Of the four kingdoms, Mistral has the most controlled territory. Really? Meaning you'll find a wider variety of ecosystems and lifestyles. Trust me, this place is something for everyone. For better or worse. The high society folks of Mistral are known worldwide for their contributions to fashion, architecture, theater, 
Is that cruel oh, putting on the posh accent? The world pretty intolerable. <laughs> but its lower class has got a fame of its own. Mistral's home to the biggest black market on the planet. No way! Need something that's hard to find? Got someone that's hard to kill? They can help. Provided you've got the Lien to pay for it. Oh my There's god. There's one common thread that links all these people together, though. And that's their respect for nature. Particularly the sea and the sky. The natural resources and geography of the area impacted Mistral's culture and technology in a big way. Wow. Its first settlers found shelter high up in the wind-carved cliffs. And as their population grew, so did their ability to utilize the land to its fullest potential. A real bunch of forward thinkers. Whoa! Of course, the bigger the kingdom, the harder it is to govern. That's true. There's a reason traders and thieves flock to Mistral. The main city's right under the council's eye, sure, but places like Windpath and Kuchinashi start to get a little farther out of sight. There's plenty of places to hide in Mistral. Oh, now that That's is awesome. Why you gotta know where to look. And Crow probably does. Wow, Mistral sounds really interesting. And the fact that they have like they have like really upper class people, like really, really posh people that like to ravish in all the luxuries of life, and then they have an underground black market, um, you know, bounty hunter hunters or hitmen or whatever that you can hire. This is gonna like this is gonna bring in some really interesting characters into the series. I can already picture it now, Ruby looking for help from someone and she has to go down to the underground areas of Mistral. Oh my god, dudes, this is gonna get extremely interesting. I can sense it already. Let's go to the next one. Okay, dude, so here is the third world of remnant. Atlas. These are so good, I love them. Here we go. Boom. Here we go, dudes. I really love how they're explaining this. And I love how Crow is the narrator. That is awesome. Best narrator yet. I suppose it's time we talked about the fine people at the top of the world. Yes. Atlas is Remnant's youngest and arguably most successful kingdom. Really? It's a bit of a special case. See, before the Great War, there was no Atlas. There was Mantle. Mantle. At some point in time, a group of settlers were crazy enough to venture out into the northernmost continent of Salatos. I guess when you're that desperate, a frozen hunk of rock doesn't seem like such a bad place to call home. I guess as so. As a matter of fact, the harsh weather conditions proved to be just as useful as the mountain ranges when it came to keeping the creatures of Grim at bay. Oh. It also kept the people of Mantle from flourishing. Humanity's got a neat trick up its sleeve, though. Whenever we're faced with a problem, our inclination is to find a solution. What is that? The cold climate of Salatos forced its settlers to adapt. What? They developed a more advanced technology, and they did it faster than the rest of the world. Because they had to, to survive. But it was the Great War that really oh, kicked Oh, wow! Them. New forms of dust application and weaponry allowed Mantle to expand. More and more territory was set aside for dust mining and research. The territory beside the kingdom's combat school, Alcius, was the most opportune area to construct a new R&D facility. But by the time things were all said and done, it would be much, much more. Wow! Alcius was reopened as Atlas after the Great War to house many of the warriors now seeking guidance in an effort to give back the citizens. Mantle applied all sorts of new dust techniques and technologies it had used in the war to beef up the academy's campus. Whoa! The school grounds expanded faster than they could have imagined. That's amazing! They even helped to better secure the surrounding areas. It wasn't long before the kingdom's military moved in, then the labs and research facilities, and eventually even residential areas started popping up. In time, it became apparent that the city of Mantle was living in Atlas' shadow. And so oh, the decision man. was made to move the kingdom's capital. Mantle was old news. Atlas and the kingdom was born. of Atlas was born. Oh my god! The golden age of <laughs> prosperity, they called it. But those left behind in Mantle would probably tell you that it was the coldest winter they ever knew. Wow! 
dudes i am getting chills just listening to crow narrate this stuff i mean he's such an amazing storyteller holy shit but wow who knew who knew atlas was actually mantle and they were so desperate to survive and then they were the masters the first masters of dust and they've used it to survive and now they have gone advanced beyond the rest of the other kingdoms and poor mantle eventually was just taken over by atlas and left to the side and the people of Mantle probably, obviously, are feeling very negative about it or whatever. But, oh my god, this is so awesome listening to all of this. I'm learning so much from this, dude. And I'm sure you guys have already seen these and you know so much about it. And you probably have done some research on it as well. But, dudes, we have one more left. So, let's get straight into it. Okay, dude. So, here is the final World of Remnant for Volume 4. Vacuo. Oh my god. Let's do it. Here we go. Boom. Ruby, World of Remnant. I absolutely love these. I think these are awesome. I love how they bring these out before the actual volume comes out. It gets you so hyped. It's got me hyped anyway, dude. Now, if there's one kingdom that's had it harder than the people of Mantle, it's Vacuo, the last of the four great kingdoms. The western end of Stannis is a barren and desolate wasteland. But long ago, before man went and ruined everything, it was a paradise. Was it? In the center of the vast desert was an oasis unlike anything you'd ever seen. Whoa. A jungle bursting with natural resources, geographical defenses, and the world's largest recorded deposit of dust. No the way! The that survived the journey across the scorching sand settled down in this little hidden gem, and over time the kingdom of Vacuo thrived. Wow. Unfortunately, Comfort breeds weakness. That's While true. the rest of Remnant had to learn and adapt in order to survive, Vacuo's ancient society kicked back and lived a life of complacency. But when other, more developed kingdoms set their eyes on everything Vacuo had to offer, oh, no. its citizens couldn't do anything to stop them from taking it. Of course not. It's a losing Years battle. Human conflict, unrestricted mining, and ecological disasters have changed Vacuo. The paradise that was once there is practically indistinguishable from the surrounding deserts. Citizens live in makeshift homes, uprooting and traveling frequently in response to the fleeting resources and occasional attacks from the creatures of Grim. God After save. the Great War, a formal government was finally established. But by that point, the folks living in Vacuo didn't much care to uphold its laws, making Shade Academy the only real source of order in the kingdom. But order isn't everything. Vacuo may not be as prim and proper as the other three kingdoms, but it's still standing. That's true, it's People still standing. have a mutual respect for one another. You see, there's really only one unspoken rule in Vacuo. If you can survive here, then you're welcome here. Wow. So there you have it. <laughs> vale, Mistral, Atlas, and Vacuo. You know, Oz would always say that the Four Kingdoms were a representation of what mankind is capable of when working together. <laughs> Makes sense. For the optimist. <laughs> oh my we god. use him now. Yeah. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> all right dude so i really freaking enjoyed that oh my god and what topped it off was just crow being the narrator i mean that voice is just so like i don't know badass but like so wise or something i don't know he give morgan and freeman a run for his money seriously but dudes it's so nice listening to all of these stories of these kingdoms i mean who knew that well, obviously these kingdoms would have some history, but it's finally, finally we're actually getting some, some sort of, you know, backstory for all of these kingdoms. And it gives us a better understanding of what goes on and what happened before and the history behind it. And it, it gives, you know, that sense of like when we are introduced to these initial regions or these initial kingdoms, we'd be like, oh my God, you know, that's the place where they had to survive and they discover the dust and they become so advanced than the rest of the kingdoms. Uh, it just gives us something to talk about. And I think that's the whole purpose of these World of Remnants. It gives us something else to talk about in the background of the initial story of Ruby, which is amazing. And I love this kind of stuff. 
it was so nice listening to this and who know who knew vacuo was like like so like you know tough and badass and at first it was like people found a place it was paradise and they got too relaxed and then these more advanced more you know beefed up soldier kind of people took over and then it became the vacuum that we know today kind of like the school of hard knocks if you can't if you can't survive here then you don't belong here which is amazing and i just think this was so nice to watch dudes it really was i really enjoyed it and i hope you dudes enjoyed my reaction to the world of remnant series of volume four like i said dudes we are on the road to volume four and i know first members have already seen it on Rooster T's channel, Volume 4, Chapter 1. Guys, I can't stress this enough. I know you guys have, may have seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I am a first member. I will watch it probably tonight. Oh, sorry. I would probably watch it either tonight or tomorrow. But any of you good dudes that have seen it, please hold it in. Hold it back. I know how much you want to talk about it, but don't spoil it in the comment section. I don't want to see it coming up in my notifications. And I'm sure the rest of the Ruby fan base don't want to see it either because it'll just ruin the excitement just trust me dudes my reaction is on the way and like i said i'm not gonna put it out there until ruby drop it on youtube because that's completely disrespectful because it is their work and they've worked so hard on it and to a reactor to put it out before they do is an insult in my opinion and i'm gonna wait so you guys are gonna have to wait as well but like i said dudes in the meantime i will be reacting to ruby chibi i am excited to do this series dudes because it looks really fun it looks funny it looks cute and i can't wait for it um i hope to have the first episode of let's watch ruby chibi now it may not be tomorrow it could be tomorrow let me just think about it a little bit it may not be tomorrow actually it could be wednesday or thursday but i will be binge watching the crap out of it dude so don't worry i will be getting several episodes out at the same time so it's gonna be exciting stuff but anyway dudes that ends my reaction to ruby volume 4 the world of remnants i thought they were amazing all together and so nice to hear crow narrate them as well it was awesome i hope you dudes enjoy if you did enjoy it please give this video a like a thumbs up and if you want to be a part of this ruby community that i have on the channel right now it's very simple what you need to do and that sting that subscribe button and that'd be super awesome also and as always dudes stay geeky stay cool be awesome and be happy and i'll see you dudes in my next video